Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to cover the risks involved when getting free help. Yeah, I, it's a great topic. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, today, as I said, we're going to cover uh, the risks involved with getting free help. It's kind of interesting because you wouldn't think, hey, it's free. It's free help. I'll take any help I can get. Um, for those of you who've ever used free help for stuff, sometimes you realize that it wasn't really worth it, <laughs> which sounds funny because it was free. But, um, you know, one of the things is just who knows what in the world they'll come up with, right? Like some sometimes people um, just come up with the craziest ideas and, uh, it, it, you know, it's one of the best management books I had read. This guy had, it was a book on, he had, he had been a, like a CEO at a company and, and he's like, normally I go into places and I just tell people what to do. You don't do what you tell you to do. You're fired. Right. And then he became the CEO at a nonprofit where everyone was volunteers. And so he realized very quickly, he'd be like, you're fired. But like, I'm a volunteer. I don't give a shit, you know, whatever they <laughs> do, whatever they want. So he really realized that he had to learn how to motivate people, you know, with when you don't have that whip, you know, the or you know, or the carrot. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that was a, I thought it was a really interesting thing. Yeah, because as you said yourself, the risk of who knows what they'll come up with. If it's a small thing you need, or or someone is just quickly uh, helping you carry in the groceries or whatever, I don't know what people could could offer up for you to do for free, but. The, the stuff is endless. Uh, if the guy offers to carry your, who knows, heavy package, um, and he drops it, what then? Uh, but yeah. but yeah, uh, if it's within the coding uh, things, someone helping you for free with setting up a small hotkey script probably not gonna be that risky but if it's like uh, he needs access to who knows your company system or your system uh, and uh, you don't have any references on him because hey he offered to do it for free so i'll just go with him um he might he might come up with something that's just mm, uh, um, more hassle that it's worth. Well, and I think to, to add to that, Jackie, um, you brought up something I hadn't thought about is generally speaking with free help, you're, you're right in the sense you don't do a background check, right? You don't, there's a lot of things you don't do when it's free help. And if you're opening up your, you know, access to things that can be very risky, right? Because they don't have any reason to not be bad. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's something I hadn't really thought about, but that's a really good one. Uh, the big one to me is, generally speaking, when I want to get something done, and, and you're spot on that it depends if you're doing something very simple, but you and I, we, we know because we see the forum especially, right? People will, will say, hey, let's do something. Hey, I'm trying to automate this thing in a browser and then you know put it into Excel, and we see them sending 8 million keystrokes, and it's just, wow, you know, will it work? Hopefully, you know, is it prone to possible errors? It's not you yeah, absolutely, right? And, and using calm, especially if you can have IE to access the page, there's so much, you know, benefits of having someone who's done it before. Because here's the thing, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I've never actually done that. I've been wanting to learn it. So here's an example. So let me go ahead and learn that and I'll do it for free because I'm just learning as I go. There's a lot of good logic there for the why it gives the person motivation to do it. Right, which I totally think that's an important thing. Uh, however, they're doing something they've never done before, and maybe there's some really good best practices that they're not going to be aware of, and end up giving you something that's really designed poorly. Yeah, and it it might if you then need to review it or change it or or have someone else work on it, either yourself because you're trying to learn from it and it's made poorly, or if you actually need at a later time to get something um, finalized, then you choose to actually go with an expert or, or whatever, um, you, you might end in a situation where they need to 
redo uh, all of it anyways. So, so yeah, yeah, just getting it for free. It's a good idea to, to have a good, uh, thought about the scope of whatever it is you, you do it with. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. are you, are you going to do the next one? Yeah, I was going to do the next one here. Yeah. Um, because I, I mentioned it myself, are they experts, right? Because a lot of the people offering up stuff for free might be working outside of their knowledge level right? because they're trying to learn and they're offering. I did this extensively within the Arahat Key community, offered up to help for free. And because it made a lot of sense to me, because I didn't want to charge while I learned, I, I did actually manage to get some paid jobs where they were okay with me learning as we went, but still. And do they know what they're doing? Because I'd say that's one of the issues with making more complex stuff. Not because I'm saying they can wreck uh, your computer or anything, but they might actually be able to mess up your data um, in, in one way or another, depending on what's going on. Because if they're trying all kinds of stuff and they have access to uh, your um, database or your files with whatever customer information or whatever, whatnot it might be, if, if they misstep, uh, at a critical point, yeah, they, they might not have made any types of backups. You have no way to hold them accountable, so to speak. Uh, if, if they make that mess up and they don't wish to fix it, um, and you don't have any kind of whip or carrot, as you said, there's no way for you to with, with help, withhold payment or anything like that. They can drop you uh, at, at a moment's notice. So yeah, and, and here's another one, uh, which is tied to that a lot, right? When you go to a company, let's say even the company for whatever reason, let's say the automator is feeling generous and we're going to offer to give you a solution for free. We're going to help you. Um, when you're working through a company, it's like my reputation is on the line. Right. And you could easily go and post things about the automate. Hey, they said they do, they didn't do it. Well, when you don't have that, when you're just talking to, but Joe said he'd do it, you don't know what company I'm with. There's, you know, how do you pin that down other than posting a random comment somewhere? It's very hard to, to, you know, feel like you have any way to really have a forum to get back and, and, you know, put them in the U S we have the better business bureau. Right, it is how you could report. You can do that. Um, I don't think many people actually check that. Uh, but anyway, there's just not much on the on the line when you're just dealing with an individual versus the company and the work they've done before, right? Um, which is another big thing. Even if you do ask, uh, you get some work for free. You know, it, it sure wouldn't hurt to have a couple couple of testimonials from other people that they've done work for, and just said, "Hey, can can you tell, show me either show me the things you've created." You know, or let me talk to a couple of people that you've done stuff if you if you don't know them at all. Um, now, now, like if they have like with me and or Jackie and I, right? We have what sixty five webinars, I think. You know, over hundred podcasts, and um, I have I don't know like nine hundred videos on YouTube. It's easy to get a gauge that I have a clue what I'm doing. You know, so if you have some way to understand that, then it's it's not so risky, right? So have a way to to gauge their level. Yeah, and everybody is allowed to uh, accept or take in uh, free work or the offers of doing it for free. Uh, this is just uh, <laughs> some of the risk that you might be taking with actually taking up an offer like that. And and one of the points we have here as well is, are they too advanced, right? Will you be able to actually... Uh, work on the code afterwards or will you be able to understand it a lot of the people who get the free help at the beginning uh, are uh, new in the community and if i sat down and made a truly advanced calm script or an automation of uh, who knows adobe uh, or something like that and 
gave it to them, they might not even be able to uh, read exactly what it's doing. I have heard it time and time again on uh, Jethro's uh, old functions of IE get and, and VP get and stuff like that, where he had trans transcumed or he had shortened a few of the commands a little bit yeah. and and uh, put a few of the things on the same line and stuff like that. So to, to new people in that area, it became not magic, but they still did not oh. fully understand what it was doing. And yeah. that's okay for a small thing, but if you're actually thinking of using it or sharing it or taking it to work or whatever it is, it it might not be a good thing for it to be so advanced that you can't actually determine what exactly it's doing. Yeah, I'd even take it a step further and I'll use a couple examples. Um, and, and both these guys, you know, do work for me. Uh, uh, Maestrieth in, let's say, Raptor X or Zayas. Um, Maestrieth, which you you know we've talked, to, brilliant, brilliant guy, right? Programs like he can write stuff so complex and dense, where it makes it reading it is so hard. But the stuff that he does for me, I don't, I never, I don't try to even look at it because I'm like, because I have a good relationship with him, and I'm like, I'm not gonna trust him. Um, but Isaiah's, he he's still a great programmer, but he doesn't, he his code I can usually still read and edit. Right, but what the the really important part is is I want oh, I want to take a step further is even Isaiah, who is a really good programmer, it will take him so long to digest something that Maestrieth wrote. You know, it, it's because it's so advanced and complex that even for a good programmer, you know, it's really really complicated code. So it if you didn't design it, you got to study the entire thing and really get in and out of where. If you just had wrote it a little simpler and less dense and less obfuscated, it's much easier to grasp. Um, and I'm not knocking either one, right? Like I use them completely differently for different things. Uh, it's just yeah, and, yeah, and, and if it's free, someone, you're right, yeah, yeah. But my point is, um, it not only might you not be able to edit it, but you might not be able to find someone else that can actually jump in and, and work on your code very easily because we, we both know Luxicos can do some stuff that, that, you know, is voodoo as far as I'm concerned, right? Like just, you know, I, I don't know who we're going to get to, to do some stuff if we had wanted, you know, anyway, you get the point, right? It's like, it just minimizes the amount of people you can find to actually work on it after the fact, after they're gone. Yeah. And, and again, you can take it for free. That's fine, but if you are actually paying a person, you can probably set up a set of uh, demands or <laughs> rules or, or whatever you want to have a frame for um, that, or or you can have a um, piece of documentation or say, you know what, as I'm paying you, please also comment your code or whatever. Whereas if it's just free, you can of course ask for it, but right. there's no reason or, or a good way for you to ensure that it happens. Yeah, which is another really good thing. And, and you and I were discussing this with them um, in that other podcast we recorded, but with the solar guy doing this, you know, I found a guy to do my solar stuff, my design for quote unquote free, um, and I hadn't told him this yet, but I was still planning to pay him like three or four hundred dollars because the other guy was going to do it for twelve hundred. And, and I happened to just try to look somewhere else and got someone to do it to me for free. But um, but I, I'm not, you know, he's doing some work and I, I feel obligated that I want to reward him. But um, I want him to know, you know, that I'm going to actually give him this money. And my point is, no matter what, even if it is, quote unquote, free, you can still find a way to either, you know, you can recognize them, you can give them praise, you can make them realize how valuable it is to you. There's lots of things you can do that aren't monetary, right? Ways to raise to still reward them that doesn't involve money. Um, and there's, so there's things you can do that can help, you know, give you a carrot for them to at least give you some, con not control, but uh, a way to 
help help guide them when you say, but I'd really, hey, by the way, could you go back and annotate that a little bit, add some comments? You know, they'll be much more likely to do what you want. Yeah, and, and we have that bullet that is, if if the person doing it for free for you, which is great if people want to do that, but something might happen. They might get burned out, right? They, they might leave you hanging or, or whatever. And because you ain't offering them anything, there is no courage for them to continue if whatever uh, happens, um, they just lose interest. Who knows what happens? Um, then you might have wasted uh, an amount of your own time. Uh, your project might still be hanging. Uh, other things like that. I'm not saying it can't happen when you're paying people for it, but the sure. chance yeah. of, of having uh, some kind of report in, um, I'll, I'll be back. I'll, I'll need three days. Uh, uh, can we do this next week? Whatever it might be. Just the idea of it actually being something you pay a small amount for or have a set amount for or whatever will probably save you these situations where someone who did it for free wrote an example. It, it kind of works, but then they lost interest and, and you're, you're then not really there and, and you have no good way of getting them back again. Well, and it's, again, it's still the same point, but it's why even when people do stuff for free for me, I find some way to reward them because I may need something at a later date and I want them, like actually this guy, um, or I'll tip them, right? Like the other day at one of my rentals, I don't know, I told you about Tang's house, um, the AC went out and uh, thankfully this guy showed up that day, you know, fixed it and it was in dismal condition. Um, but he fixed it, you know, very quickly, he got it running again. I need still need the new system. But, you know, I was going to um, pay him a bit more because AC is something, you know, especially when you're a landlord, you have to get people, you know, out there fast and prioritize. And, hey, who's not going to prioritize you if you pay them more than what they said the bill was, right? <laughs> like, they have a good memory of, like, oh, hey, this guy not only paid me, but he he gave me, a, you know, $15 extra. I mean, it doesn't have to be a lot, right? But it just says, hey, I really appreciate you doing this. And money or there's, again, so many other ways, but find some way to reward them um, regardless because you chances are you'll need something else from them at some point in time. And if they have that positive feeling towards you, they're much more likely to come back to you and help. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, th and speaking of which, we would really appreciate it if you would like this video. So we'll make more, right? Get yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks. I'm going to. Yeah. Bye. Oh, if you guys have anything, other things that you typically do to help, you know, find ways, even if it's not monetary, how do you typically reward people? Right. Uh, do yeah. You do, do you get a lot of stuff, a lot of free help? Do you give a lot of free help? Uh, exactly. Do you have any good points on, on why to do so or not do so? That's yeah. Right. And, and if you do, actually, it's a good point, Jackie. If you're giving free help, what are ways that people have rewarded you? That you, like again, let's stay away. Money's easy, right? What are other ways where you're like, oh, you know what? That was a simple thing they did that I really enjoyed. And it's oftentimes it's even more valuable. Like to me, twenty bucks is nice, but it's twenty bucks. But when people tell me how my code changed their life, like that's better to me than the 20 bucks, honestly. Yeah. Like, it really makes me feel really good and, and want to do more. All right, cheers. Yeah, fine.